welcome to the Liberty Podcast with Clint Armitage. We are proclaiming liberty one show at a time, and the next one starts right now. All right, all right. How's it going, everybody? Yeah, it's Clint Armitage back again for one more episode of the Liberty Podcast. Thanks for joining me today. So we finished chapter 6.1 last time, half of chapter 6 in Matthew. Now we're going to be 6.2 and finish up the rest of this chapter in Matthew here. And this, uh, the first section is treasures in heaven. And the second section is not worrying or about worry. Okay, so let's jump right in. This is verse 19 in chapter 6 of Matthew. Here we go. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Okay, so uh, let's go back to 19 through 21 here. It's talking about storing up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. So it's it's basically taking the world worldly mindedness, I guess, and how we can get caught up into storing up material things or money or things that are temporary, right? They're only temporal. They're not there's nothing that's eternal except what God has created eternal. And Our goal is to store things in heaven that are eternal, store our treasures up in heaven that that don't just fall away, right? That aren't temporal. So like money and possessions, right? Although this world, we can get in this world, we can get caught up into collecting. We can get caught up into possessing and hoarding. And I mean, shoot, there's even a show about hoarding, right? Some people have it bad, that bad that they, that it's a, you know, a disease within them. But every one of us has the potential to focus on material things and things that are temporal in this world. And God's saying, Jesus is saying here in his sermon here, he's saying, don't place treasures, don't store up treasures in things that are temporal, okay? Where moth and rust destroy, right? Moth eats up clothing. And back then, clothing was a big thing. It is now still, too. And then rust, obviously, with metal and um, things that you think are sturdy, right? But rust can actually make those things unsturdy or to the point where they're brittle and they break. So even though they may appear strong, money may appear like it protects people. And sometimes it, it really looks that way, but that's not really the case. In the eternal economy, in God's economy, it doesn't last Uh, you know, at all, because it is truly temporal, because in God's economy, he is worried about the eternal. He is focusing us in the right place, okay? So don't store up treasures that are, you know, that can be eaten by moths and destroyed by rust. All right. So because he's connecting it to where our our heart is, right? Because we, we, I mean, most of the time we can realize it, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get caught up in the newest thing, or I got to make more money, or, you know, I've got to put all my time and effort in things that are temporal. And really what happens is we start to get caught up. We start to believe that those are the things that are going to keep us, but really they aren't. Again, they will go away. It's like grass in the wind, right? It's like flowers in the field. They die over time. And so these material things that we get caught up thinking that they can protect us, that they'll provide, it's only temporal, okay? So store up for yourselves things that will not be destroyed by moths or by rust, okay? Where thieves do not break in and steal, okay? These things cannot be stolen because where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So make sure your treasure is in the right place and it's focused on heaven and God's will and what God believes uh, for you and wants you and his will to do, okay? Now, verse 22 says, the eye of the lamp is the lamp of the body. Your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And if the light within you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Okay. I mean, that's actually, it's, it's funny because you can actually, well, 
you can't 100% say, but man, just by looking at someone when you're speaking to them, you can look into their eyes and, and kind of sense how much light they have in them. Is God within them? Is it light or darkness? See, the, the Bible says that the eye is the lamp of the body. And that's where you can see, you know, kind of a person's lightness or darkness in terms of is there actual light in them? Is God, is God's light within them? If not, then you may see some darkness. And if people are really astray and off the road, then you can you can really see the darkness. But you can tend to see, you know, people's hearts a little bit just by looking into their eyes and seeing the light or the darkness within them. All right, so now we move on to verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money, which is true, right? Again, going back to where is your heart? Where are your treasures? Do you put effort, time, energy, money into things that are temporal or things that are eternal? Okay. I mean, you can, you know how that old saying is you can tell someone by, by looking at their checkbook, you can tell where their heart is or their treasure is just by looking at their checkbook. Well, now we don't really have uh, checkbooks these days, but we do have bank accounts and we have statements and, you know, spending um, kind of lists, the things that we spend our money on. That's what it's talking about is where do you put all your time, effort, energy, and money? Because wherever that is, is where your heart is right? And some of us can do better. Shoot, I, I can do better. I know I focus on things that uh, I shouldn't focus on so much. And, and uh, it, it, it's something that I need to work on. But we all can, can do better in those areas, right? Because things can, can distract us and get us caught up into, into areas that aren't necessarily eternal. Or not God's plan for us, right? Okay. So also it says now you can serve. You can't serve two masters. Either hate one and love the other, or love one and hate the other, right? So actually, there's another verse that I wanted to look at in Luke chapter 18 that really goes into that. Okay. And, and first off, you know, material things are they tend to lead us away from God. There's not much of material things that actually lead us towards God. It normally will lead us away from God. So storing up material material things and focusing on material things are, you know, I mean, they're practical sometimes, but they're not necessarily eternal. Um, a lot of it is just mostly for show. It's something that we like. Um, we may need it for practicality, but the need is not necessarily a need. We may say it's a need, but it's not necessarily a need, right? We only need a few things, like really, in life. So we got to choose between one or the other. All right, so Luke 18, verse 18 through 30 talks about a rich ruler. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read that because it's a, it's a pretty good story about choosing between two masters and it's pretty clear. Okay, here we go. Uh, verse 18 in Luke chapter 18. A certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not commit murder. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus replied, What is impossible with men is possible with God. Okay, let's stop there. Now, one thing I did want to talk about was the eye of the needle comment there. Because people, people, when they read that, they think, well, is that a real eye of the needle? Like the little needle that we poke with, that we sew with? Or is it something else? Because supposedly there's a gate that's in, uh, in, in Jerusalem. There, there's a gate that's not on the main gates, but a gate that's called the eye of the needle. And you've, you may have heard that before. You can research it and find it, see if there's a real gate. And basically, it's supposedly a gate that is like half the size of a normal gate, like really small to where a camel would have to stoop down to get through it. And in order to get through it, you'd have to strip the camel of all the baggage. Everything it's carrying would have to come off the camel for it to fit through. Now, I've seen a picture of something like this, and I've seen a, a human actually have to bend down and get through it. And you could see that, yeah, a camel would have to, would definitely have to be stripped um, to be able to get through. And logically, you could think, 
Okay, I see what Jesus is saying. You can strip the camel so don't have any baggage, don't have any material things in order to get into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Rich men can't do it. Well, so strip down just like the camel going through the eye of the needle gate. You have to strip that camel down in order to get through and for it to get through. But I mean, that's a logical kind of explanation for it, but I actually don't believe that. I actually believe it is truly a needle, something that is impossible. And why do I say that? Because in verse 27, Jesus replies, what is impossible with men is possible with God. So that's where, I mean, that's the main the main thing that gets me to believe that Jesus was talking about something impossible, something that couldn't be done. Well, if you strip a camel down and get him through that eye of the needle gate, then it's possible. It's human, humanly possible. But wait, why would Jesus say what is impossible with men is possible with God? He would only say that if it was truly impossible for man to do that. Okay, so that's the eye of the needle. But it goes back to, you know, stripping down your stuff and making it humanly possible by, you know, stripping the camel down of all his baggage, like man has to be stripped down um, of all his material things in order to make it through the the gate. But that's, I think that's a a poor kind of um, explanation for that, because why would Jesus say it's impossible for man, right? And so, and God is, is capable of all things. So, of course, you know, you if, he, if Jesus is saying you need God for something, then it's a supernatural thing. So I kind of tend to believe that it's not actu- an actual gate, but it's an actual needle that a camel could, nothing could, <laughs> barely anything could fit through except a thread, right? So, okay, so that's the treasures in heaven. You know, the bottom line is that rich ruler, he went away because he said, I was doing all these things. I did everything. And then Jesus goes, well, he, because of course, Jesus is the son of man. He is the son of God. He knows exactly his issue, the rich ruler's issue. And the rich ruler's issue was his richness, was his money. So Jesus said, okay, you've done all that. You only have to do one thing, sell all your stuff and then follow me. And that was too difficult a thing for that rich ruler to do. So what does that say? His possessions, his material things were above his faith in God. And so you can see where his treasures were. His treasures were not in heaven. His treasures were stored up here on earth because he had a lot of it and he couldn't let it go. And we can do this at any scale. We don't have to be a rich ruler. We can be uh, middle class. We could be poor. We can be low income. And we could still put our treasures in things that are that can get destroyed by moths and rust, which is all thing, material things. It's things of this world, things that don't last. But what we want to do is put our stuff and put our time, energy, effort, money into things eternal, treasures in heaven. Okay, so now we've we finished that section. Let's move on to uh, verse 25 and we'll finish out the, uh, the chapter from here. Okay, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Pretty clear, but very. it's not an easy thing. Don't worry about your life. And, and they're talking about, Jesus is talking about daily things, you know, things that are necessary, but... Um, needed on a daily basis, like eating, drinking, clothing. And those are the things that people worry about a lot. Yeah. And it's a big worry, right? How are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to put food on the table? Those can be big worries. And Jesus is saying, do not worry about those immediate things, even the stuff like food. He's saying you don't have to. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow, they don't reap, they don't store away in barns, yet your heavenly father feeds them. And he says, you're much more important than those birds. So the God, so God is going to provide for you just like he provides for the birds and even much more because those are just birds. He cares about you more, right? And so you're much more valuable than them, than those birds. So don't worry because it's just going to add. I mean, can, as he says right here, can it really add a single hour to your life? Does it help? You know, I guess there's a study out there that says 80% of the things that we worry about actually does not come true. 80%. That means we wor- we over worry like massively. Like we worry way too much. 80%. So do a test on that for yourselves too and see if that's true for yourself. Think about the last thing you worried about. Did it come true? And did it come true exactly as you thought, right? Because we tend to think the worst, but then 
it doesn't really hit that level most of the time. And that study says that 80% of the time, it doesn't even come true. So 80% of the time we are worrying for no reason and probably taking away hours from our life from stress. <laughs> so don't do that. Okay. All right, let's move on to verse 28 here. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the, gr clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Okay, so it obviously it's going into more of the same there, worrying about clothes and food and stuff. And... Then he says, oh, you of little faith. He says the pagans run around thinking about this stuff, worrying about that kind of thing, right? Pagans, non-believers, they are going around worrying about how are they going to do all these things. And God's saying, no, have faith. Faith that God will provide the things that you need. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to be providing all this overabundance of stuff, but he provides a need, truly the need. He doesn't always provide the want, but he says he will provide the need. Okay. So you'll always have what you need. So we have to stop worrying about this stuff that we don't have to worry about because God will provide. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Okay. So then he goes on to say, and which is a famous verse that you've probably seen, you know, many times in the past here, uh, Matthew six thirty three. but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So we don't need to focus and worry about these things like food clothing, drink, these daily necessities. God will provide them. He's telling you to focus on his kingdom and his righteousness. You focus on him first. Again, going back to where your treasure is, right? Put your time, energy, focus on the things of his kingdom and he will provide. Each day has enough trouble of its own. All right, Christian, my name is Clint Armitage. This is the Liberty Podcast. Thanks for coming by. I want you to stay safe, stay motivated, and keep seeking liberty. for another episode of the Liberty Podcast with Clint Armitage. If you want to get in touch, email us at info at clintarmitage.com.